So uh, the first presenter in this session is Sue Bidrose. Is she, um, is she online? Excellent, thank you. So uh, Sue unfortunately cannot be here today. She, um, uh, she has been the Chief Executive of AgriSearch for two years, and for two years she has been looking forward to being at this conference. And yet, uh, touched, by, uh, touched by COVID, she was at, a, at an event during the weekend which was infested by Australians, um, who were in turn infested by COVID. So it's unfortunately <laughs> unfortunate that she is not able to be with us, but as a, um, as a second best, um, she is uh, uh, going to be with us remotely. Thank you, Sue. Uh, thanks very much, and thank you all ha for having me. Yeah, I am really actually quite disappointed not to be there. Um, uh, my personal uh, preference as a chief executive is to sit around listening to science rather than sit around listening to people talk about spreadsheets, um, which is what um, mostly seems to want to occupy my days. So I was really looking forward to a couple of science-filled days. Um, I've been looking forward to it more than once since I started Ag Research, um, but this blooming COVID is out to thwart me. And yes, I, I had a family event, a family that I haven't seen for a long time over from Australia. And, um, and of the 18 of us that gathered, 12 of them now have COVID. Uh, so I felt it was uh, wise to, um, to keep my distance from you all. So apologies. I just want to thank um, the New Zealand Society for Animal Production, the New Zealand Agronomy Society for the conference uh, and for working together, but also for, to uh, Warren King, especially my contact and Laurie Copeland, your, um, your past president and president for um, pulling together what looks to be a really great conference. It still looks to be a great conference. I'm just not going to quite enjoy it the same way that you are. Um, Warren asked me to come on and talk a little bit about um, what's ahead of us in terms of the MB review of the science sector, um, the new era of public good science. Some people are talking about it as. Um, I must say, in my preparation, I was thinking about you guys and thinking about the Grasslands Association vision, which is fueled by science and tempered by experience. And we can only cross our fingers and hope that that is also um, the vision for the people at Hemby who are pulling together the review of the science system. They certainly are fueled by science and um, and increasingly we are feeling heard and listened to as, as the, t the size of the team working on the reforms um, is growing rapidly and the engagement with our sector. For a long time it felt like they were engaging with everyone apart from the CRIs, even though it is predominantly about us. Um, but that is definitely changing. There's some very quality people working on that review, which is encouraging. Um, a little bit by way of background in terms of what the review is, and the reason I've been asked to talk about this is it will definitely affect ag research, but one way or another, it will affect probably most of you uh, directly or indirectly. So um, the old minister, Megan Woods, announced um, announced the the review, well, actually more than two years ago, because when I applied for this role, um, my board chair, Paul Reynolds, told me that he could pretty much guarantee me a year in the job before Ag Research might be restructured out of existence. And um, just as a matter of interest, the institutional change process, the part, that part of the reform, we're now talking about 2028, no, 2026, um, which some suggest means 2028 or possibly 2038. So. Um, it's a long, it is definitely a long, slow burn um, as uh, the minister, the government um, really want to get this right, which again is very encouraging. So they put out in um, October 2021, they put out Te Ara Paerangi, um, a green paper on the, the future of science and um, in particular the CRIs. Initially it was going to be a review of the whole science sector, <coughs> excuse me, uh, but but MB doesn't have the power to reform the university sector. They have, um, they have kind of their power is limited to kind of the way we interface with the with the university sector. So that's kind of, I mean, they'll be seeking to influence thinking around how the universities and the CRIs work together. I mean, it also touches a bit on some of the private research institutions, certainly on the uh, national science challenges. Um, the, basically, the Green Paper said that the current system put in place 30 years ago is out of date and it needs to be reworked to be fit for the future. And it came up with six themes or six areas where they were going to do um, some fairly intensive work. Um, the first one was around science prioritisation. So how does New Zealand set its science priorities? The National Science Challenges 
uh, are due to finish in mid-2024, and everything we are hearing suggests that they will, in fact, finish. Um, that there might be some work around implementation of final research, but there is there doesn't appear to be anything on the horizon looking to extend the existing science challenges. Um, uh, instead, there will be a new process, and this is the first cab off the rank for this work out of MB, which will start next year to to how what is the process by which the New Zealand's research priorities are set. Um, the second thing that's on the agenda and the second theme, so you've got science prioritisation or setting science priorities. The second one is Mataranga Māori and Te Tiriti. Um, the third one is funding. The fourth one is workforce development. Five is the institutional arrangements. So what they're saying is that comes late in the process because form should follow function, which is good in theory. Um, and the last one's infrastructure. And they actually, after consultation around that, added a seventh, which was uh, commercialisation. It's been really hard to know what's going on and where this is going. Um, uh, we get snippets from the minister. If you want to see a little bit more, go onto the Beehive website. The minister, the new minister now, so Aisha Vero has picked up uh, this reform. And she went to the KiwiNet Awards and she talked, she gave a really, really good speech actually, um, in which, well, I found out quite a little. Uh, uh, got a much better flavour of what the reforms are trying to do from listening to her speech. And so it is on the it is on the, the Beehive website, not a video of it, but but a transcript of it. There was two or three things she said that in that speech that I wanted to share with you that were particularly pointed or that I found, that I took uh, on board. The first thing she said was, scant funding can lock people into grant application processes that have a low likelihood of success. Competition isn't good when it's unproductive. I 100 percent agree with her. So as a matter of interest for you to know around the CRIs, when we were set up in 1990, um, the, the, there's a, a funding mechanism called SIF, which is the sort of base funding we get. It pays for research. It doesn't pay our kind of background expenses. We, we have to put overheads on every piece of research we all do. Um, that was set in the level of that was set in 2002. Ag research gets 44 million. In 2002, we got 35 million. Uh, sorry, 39 million dollars a year. That went on for quite a long time, unadjusted, unadjusted for inflation. They did add five million a year to us um, for digital ag for di digital agriculture science. Um, so a hot, that is kind of earmarked for work in that area where we weren't doing anything. That was a while back. Um, but that. Uh, and, and actually, some of the other CRIs have had no adjustment like that over the 2000 since 2002. So we have never had an inflation adjustment. So, so our SIF funding is now worth maybe 30, 40 percent less than it was. And in addition, other key areas where we go for grant funding, um, uh, in particular the Endeavour, which used to be 60 to 70 percent, go to the primary sector. Last year, 21% of the Endeavour Round funding went to the primary sector, and this year, 14%. And actually, various members of the uh, Endeavour Fund team have kind of suggested that the primary sector's day has been um, with regard to funding out of Endeavour. So, so that's troublesome. And, and the Marsden grants, the proportion going to the CRIs and to Science for Impact, has also declined steadily over the years. So, so make no bones about it, funding for science in our sector, in the primary sector, but particularly in the agriculture sector, is challenging. It is, when I say challenging, I mean declining. Um, uh, it's very easy to just kind of be a little bit cynical and look at public servants and think every time they've got a, fu a funding problem, they think, oh, let's just do a restructure. Um, and the jury is really out internationally as to whether big restructures do actually save back office money. Um, I think you only need to look at Auckland Council to have a look and think, yes, that there has been no reduction in back office expenses from the merging of seven councils. And I know when they split the DSIR up and created the CRIs, uh, part of that was about the size of that institution. Um, that said, it is hard for our scientists to work across institutions, and that's not ideal. We are actually exceedingly collaborative. You are exceedingly collaborative as a sector. Um, but uh, but the minister raised um, uh, collaboration again in that speech to KiwiNet Awards. She said institutional structures are rigid and act as barriers to collaboration rather than enablers. Um, and we've got some really great examples of 
excellent collaboration like B3, Better Border Biosecurity, where we don't let the institutions get in the way. Um, but, but it is hard, and it is hard when funding is tight and people put their money in and they need to make sure they get their share of the money back. B3 has somehow managed to avoid that. that and we are, um, us and Plant and Food, Manaki Whenua, are just beginning a process to look at how can we free up, how can we take the institutional boundaries out and make it easier to collaborate. That's work that's just kicking off now. Um, the third thing that the minister said was uh, system responsiveness and engagement with Māori is weak. And it is clear that that is going to be addressed in the reforms. Uh, and from our, for our sector, that's a good thing. A, a huge proportion of our, uh, um, uh, you know, a, a chunk of our land is being farmed as Māori land by Māori farmers. And some of what we do simply doesn't sheet home to groups that are different or that farm differently, that want to farm differently. And so making sure that um, that the reforms address some of those gaps uh, is a key part of what's driving MFE, uh, sorry, MB as well. Uh, and, and I mentioned MFE, but actually um, other government departments like MPI and Ministry for the Environment are quite actively involved. So um, that's kind of a summary, just so you know uh, what's going on in the background about what the reforms are doing. I don't know what will happen with regard to institutional structure. And although we all say form follows function, of course, instantly we start thinking, you know, am I, am I going to have a job? Who am I going to be in a lab with? Am I going to have to move, move city? Um, uh, those things are so like years down the track before we get to that level um, of detail. The, the, the bits that are being worked on, oh, that said, um, there are some hints so several things we have seen talk about a smaller number of larger, more nimble institutions. Larger and more nimble don't often go together um, uh, as a whole institution, but I think what they're driving at is for scientists within the institution, being able to work collaboratively in different areas, being able to, to add some different thoughts to a research project, being able to have collaborations of people who focus on different things. It's that kind of nimbleness. And, and when you think about that, if science genuinely is driving these reforms, then I'll be pretty happy with the outcome. In terms of ag research, um, ag research and plant and food, I mean, I, as a newcomer back into the sector after many, many years of being away from ag research, um, as a new, as, as coming back into the sector, I have a look and it. I, I kind of find it hard to think plant and food and ag research are logically demarcated. The animal protein line of demarcation probably isn't the defining characteristic that it once was in terms of um, in terms of food. Um, but on the other hand, well, I think some decision making is going to happen around optimal organisational size and things like that. So um, keep your ear to the ground. It, it's a, as I say, it's a slow burn. The, the bits they're working on at the moment. The first bit is the, the national research priorities. So that will be next year. Early, there's a white paper coming out before Christmas. So, so government process, green paper raises all the issues. White paper is a very high level document saying, here's kind of what we're going to do about some of these. Um, it won't be about institutional reform, but it will touch on, we understand, the, the process for national research priority setting. That'll, have, that'll start next year, which of course it has to with the national science challenges coming to the end. And the minister said, actually, she doesn't feel like those national science challenges have had, have always had their desired impact, and she, they're talking about a new framework. Te Tiriti and Māori aspirations in research and science and embedding those uh, Te Tiriti principles and priorities, that's going to be pretty critical from the government's perspective to the success and and and, and having science that appeals to, to, to Māori and to Māori landowners. And finally, workforce. There's a lot of information happening in the workforce area. So um, rightly acknowledging that the only reason this system exists is because of the people who do the science, scientists, lab technicians, and the whole gamut of people working, you actually, most of you working in science, uh, uh, setting up good career paths for researchers, encouraging workforce mobility, which means people can move between different parts of the system, um, um, being able to move from foundational research right through to science for impact. I think the key thing to remember is the CRIs, the, the, the reason for being is science for impact. 
and and making sure that our impactful science then has a has a prioritisation route um, through to through to on farm adoption, and um, and it seems like the minister really has taken that information on board. The only other thing she did announce in, in Kimunet is that there's two new research and development grants, the Arohia Innovation Trailblazer Grant, so um, a co-funded thing with um, with non-R&D projects, innovation projects, and the new to research and development grant to establish businesses to um, develop an R&D programme. The minister did also recommit to 2% of our GDP being spent on science and development by 2030. Um, it's a promise that's been long in the making, but but short in the achieving, so um, fingers crossed. I guess um, to close, to reiterate that that your theme, fueled by science, tempered by experience, if that is brought to bear on the science reforms, then, then we can look forward to some pretty good things happening. Um, that tempered by experience, though, that means get involved. So, so you know, if if, our, if volunteers are asked for to join working groups and to give ideas through surveys and so on, please put your hand up. Um, it was a pretty narrow range of people that got involved, and, and, and certainly almost nobody from our stakeholder sector got really heavily involved in the uh, in the first round of consultation. So please encourage people to get involved. It's the experience on the ground of what uh, what is really happening that will make the difference between it being a, a policy analyst piece of work and a piece of work that really genuinely benefits science. Now, I'm sorry I'm not there to take questions. Um, I'm sorry I'm not there in general, actually, but um, I really do wish you all the best for the next couple of days. Thank you, Sue. Um, there's a, lo a lot, a lot to think about in that, uh, and I'm sorry that that Sue can't be with us for the next couple of days. It really does limit the richness of the conversation. But in all the uh, toing and froing about the um, about the COVID, she's been exposed to. Um, I now have her mobile phone number, so I'm happy to put that up on screen. If you've got any questions, just fire them straight through to her. Uh, the oh, you weren't supposed to hear that. <laughs> Damn it. Um, uh, Sue, I think, asked me specifically yesterday when this was uh, boiling up whether, uh, whether the conference was being live streamed because she actually genuinely did want to sit in on some of these sessions. Unfortunately, it's not, but it is being recorded, uh, so I'm assuming all the presenters are aware of that uh, and will be available um, down the track uh, through the, uh, through the uh, Grasslands YouTube channel and, and other, um, other points as well. So I hope that Sue will have the opportunity to catch some of these presentations in her own time. <laughs>